I bought this broken PS5 on eBay because I really wanted to save it. Not only does it have both back USB ports that are broken, the disk drive isn't working correctly, but the reason it's in this green packaging is because it used to have live roaches in it. Keywords used to, at least the seller said that it's been cleaned. We'll find out once we get it open. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. But first, now we can open it up and see if there are still any live insects in it. And so far so good. There's a lot of nasty bug pieces in it, but so far nothing live. So top cover, and that looks pretty disgusting. Oh, the fan, the fan's actually, this uh, fan cage is kind of bent. Got a bunch of hair in here. Well, let's look at the other side and see how bad it is. Oh, wow, look at this. That is so gross. <laughs> it smells really bad too. You got a bunch of little bug pieces in here. There's also something sticky over here, which is not ideal. This so far looks like the perfect console to send over to Robert on the Restore's channel. I think he's gonna have fun with this one. But first things first, we gotta do the repair on it. The first thing I'm gonna fix is these two HDMI ports, so for that, we have to get down to the board. Also, this has not been taken apart before. The warranty sticker is intact. So this will be the first time this has been apart. Clean my gloves off before I start using my tools. Wouldn't wanna ruin my fancy iFixit tools by a bunch of cockroach guts. Okay, and here we go. There's no signs of live roaches so far. I hope it stays that way. I've done a lot of repairs of PS4s that have had live roaches, and it's not fun. Sometimes they even get into your house, which Tronic's wife was definitely not impressed with. <laughs> Oh, look at this. We've got a Western Digital Black SSD. That's a bonus I wasn't expecting. That is so gross. There's even one stuck right there. I've got to make sure and leave that so when Robert gets this to do his cleaning video, he sees that. Oh, that's going to be an entertaining video, at least for me to watch. Always pull up on the white part of these connectors, not on the cream colored part. The cream colored part is attached to the motherboard. And if you pull up on that part and break it off, you'll have to learn how to solder in order to put it back on. Now the fan, oh, we lost that roach. And that is pretty disgusting. Again, that'll be a good one for the cleaning video. Okay, I need to make sure and keep this guy though, because we need to place him back in there. Be like a little surprise. This is like stuck on here. I think I got all the screws. All the screws are out. Oh, I hope this isn't liquid damage too. Oh. Yeah, there's some sort of liquid that got in that somehow, I think. This part is kind of like welded down with some sort of sticky liquid. That's disgusting. This thing is so gross, I can't even explain. I don't even know where to put this. I guess I'll just put it on my floor and vacuum when I'm done. Now the disk drive does need work, but we're gonna worry about that last. Okay, and what are we gonna find under this metal cover? These things sometimes are stuck on here pretty good. Make sure we got all the screws out, yeah. And that's just normal, so you gotta pull on it pretty hard. There we go. Okay. All right. Just, you know, a few loose, Dead roaches, no big deal. Some uh, hairballs. Okay, totally expected so far. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the other side. Oh yeah, huge dry spot. That's exactly what I expected. Look at how dry that is and how dry this is. So we'll need to deal with that, but let's deal with these USB ports first. Look at all these roach pieces that came out of there. I'm actually just gonna collect all of these and dump them back in the console when I'm all done. So I wanna make sure Robert gets the full experience 
when he opens this thing up. I use iFixit tools for every repair that comes through my shop. Not only are they super high quality, they also have a great guarantee. So if you have any troubles with your bits wearing out or any of your other tools breaking, all you have to do is contact iFixit and they'll send you right out another one. In my opinion, iFixit's precision tools are some of the best out there, but they don't just sell tools. They also sell things like parts. You can get genuine OEM parts from a number of manufacturers right on iFixit's website. If you're trying to repair your device for the first time or just need a refresher on how it's done, you can go right to iFixit and you can look up repair guides for your device. They even have repair guides for things like Patagonia clothing. And if you're trying to diagnose what's wrong with your device, they also have a great Q&A section where you can get answers from experts who have done your repair before. These are all reasons that I love iFixit. You should check them out too. Go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. So we've got a donor board right here that's got two good USB ports and these are the bad ones. So I'm gonna first start by removing these ones and then we'll install these into those places. Now USB ports are kind of interesting and a little bit different than HDMI ports. The pins on the USB ports go all the way through the board, whereas on the HDMI port over here, the pins just stay on the top of the board. So this is going to take plenty of heat, just like HDMI ports, they also take plenty of heat but we need to make sure that it's got plenty of heat on there and then these should just fall out. I do need to remove this metal mesh because the heat will totally deform these and make them so they're not even usable. So I've got this area all prepped and ready to go. I did put some Kapton tape over the ethernet port as it is a lot of plastic and I want to avoid melting it. So I'm gonna keep as much heat as I can over here and try to not put any more heat over here than is needed to remove this USB port. So I'm gonna use my hot air soldering station to heat up these ports until the solder melts and then the ports should just fall out the bottom. This repair looks great. Now let's deal with that liquid metal. Let's clean some of this oxidation off with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Sometimes it's really hard to really get it to spread around very much until you clean it off a bit. So we're gonna do that first here. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and just rub this around. Sometimes it takes a, a firm touch to really get the oxidation to rub off. Again, though, I did clean this first, so that really helped. I'm just using this swab that came with the liquid metal package. There's quite a bit of liquid metal around the edges here, so I'm gonna use the syringe that comes with the liquid metal package and suck some of that up, just like that, and then we'll put it onto the APU chip right over here. Now we can spread it around a little bit easier. We do need to add some more liquid metal here. So I'm gonna grab a new syringe full of that. And I am using Conductor Knot. I'll leave a link for this in the description. This is the liquid metal that I use and I like. Not sponsored maybe someday, but not sponsored right now. All right, I'm just gonna add a little more onto the APU. Oop, there we go. And then I will rub that around just a little bit to make sure it's even. Oh yeah, that's good, really good. Now we need to do the same thing right here on the heat sink side. So again, I'm gonna clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. This isn't always needed, but sometimes it, it helps. Sometimes this oxidation is really stubborn and hard to get off. So I've found that it does help to clean it with IPA first in some instances. Okay, and that looks really good. The liquid metal is spread nice and evenly. All the oxidation is gone. We've got the perfect amount of liquid metal, of course. Now we can get the board reinstalled 
And then we can have a look at that disk drive and see what's going on there. There we go. And then the top metal piece can go on after that. And then the disk drive. And this top case piece. Including roaches. And we'll just put the fan in just so it has cooling while we're testing it. There we go. Now it's together enough that I can turn it on, see if it turns on, and then test the disk drive. Probably what's going on with the disk drive is there's a bunch of dead cockroaches in it, but we'll see. Okay, do we have power to the disk drive? Yes. Let's see if it turns on. It does turn on. All right. Wow, that smells really bad with the fan going. Let's put the disc in. That's going in really slow. Okay, that tells me what I need to know. We need to take this disc drive apart and have a look at the inside. Okay, now this bottom piece should come off, assuming it's not too stuck on there. Yeah, that is pretty gross and dirty inside. So I want to get these two rollers out, just like that. I'm going to leave this gear up in here so I remember where it goes. Eh, it's probably going to fall out. Yeah, that's all right. So now I'm going to clean each one of these. I don't know if this is the only problem with this disk drive, but since it wouldn't even take the disk in, I know it's one of the problems, probably one of the main problems. Although this has got some pretty crazy grooves on it. I'm not sure if just a cleaning is going to be enough to get this working. I think it might be better to replace these. I'm going to get another pair from a donor disk drive and have a look at those and see if they're any better. Now before I put those in, I am going to clean this a little bit. I don't want to clean it too much because I want to leave Robert plenty of things to clean but I don't want to put these new rollers in with it this dirty right in, around where they go because I can just make them all dirty again. So just for good measure, let's give the laser a bit of a cleaning. There we go. Now we can put this back in here and hopefully that's all this disk drive needs as far as repair. Oh, that looks so much better. I think that's going to work just fine. Part of me hates putting this thing back together like this because it's so dirty, but also that's going to make such a better video over on the Restorist channel. There we go. Okay. Now this thing back together again. Let's see what happened when you try to put a disc in. Comes on. Oh, it takes it right in. All right, and that spins up and works great. And there we go. We only have one other thing to test, and that's to see if these rear USB ports are working. Let's plug in a controller and see if they work. Now, if this works, this light should light up once I plug it in. Let's see if it does. And... Oh, okay. There we go. We got a light. And it is working up on the screen. I was a little worried at first, but it looks like everything's fine. If you want to see a video of this entire PS5 getting fully cleaned and brought back to basically new condition, I'll put a link for the Restorist video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with Robert and watch this thing get restored to basically brand new. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix. There's also a link right in the description that'll take you right there. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.